Welcome to this service of Holy Communion for the sixth Sunday after Trinity. Let us pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Almighty God, to, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and, and from whom no secrets, secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments, and to live in love and peace with all. Almighty, Almighty God, God, our, our Heavenly Father, Father, we, we have, have sinned against, against you and, and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, we are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon, and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Creator God, you made us in your image. May we discern you in all that we see and serve you in all that we do. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. A reading from the letter to the Romans. So then, brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very Spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, if in fact we suffer with him, so that we may also be glorified with him. I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that about to be revealed to us, for the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not of its own will, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay, and will obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labour pains until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, Grown inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. <coughs> for in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope, for who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. <coughs> Great is thy faithfulness. Great. 
said, Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. He put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field. But while everybody was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat, and then went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the householder came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? He answered, An enemy has done this. The slave said to him, Then do you want us to go and gather them? But he replied, No, for in gathering the weeds you would uproot the wheat along with them. Let both of them grow together until the harvest. And at harvest time, I will tell the reapers, collect the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. <clears throat> then he left the crowds and went into the house. And his disciples approached him, saying, Explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field. He answered, the one who sows the good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world, and the good seed are the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one, and the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are angels. Just as the weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all evildoers, and they will throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their Father. Let anyone with ears listen. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? Walter Hilton of Nottinghamshire was an Augustinian canon of the 14th century. And among other works, he wrote a book called The Scale, or Ladder, of Perfection. It's a guide to a full Christian life, prayer, contemplation and action, and is one of the masterpieces of the flourishing of English mystical writing of the 14th and 15th centuries. It's provided continuous inspiration since its appearance, and it contains the lines. When thou attackest the root of sin, Fix thy thoughts more upon the God whom thou desirest than upon the sin which thou abhorrest. Abhorrence anchors us to the object which is hated, so that our mind can scarcely escape from its influence. This rule also applies to personal animosity. We can't let an individual against whom we have a grudge escape our attention. We may even expect our friends to share our anger and dislike, and feel betrayed if they stay friends with the person concerned. Jealousy can have a similar effect. We can't take our mind off the unfortunate person and are secretly pleased if some misfortune befalls them. The Italian psychotherapist and psychiatrist Roberto Assagioli cited a fundamental psychological principle. We are dominated, he wrote, by everything with which our self becomes identified. 
but it can quite often be comforting to settle down behind an object of dislike. Hatred can be a relieving emotion and can appear to protect us from coming to grips with what our own character is really like. This applies especially to thoughts which we can blame on our hereditary or how we were brought up. The secret to progress in such a situation is to cease hating anybody whether close to us or far away. Jesus' teaching comes to mind. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, so that you may be children of your Father in heaven. For he makes his Son rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the righteous and on the unrighteous. One way out of the prison of hatred is the practice of positive thinking, in which we focus our thoughts on positive things while trying to stop dwelling on negative qualities. We try to think of their positive counterparts. This can be helpful in the short term, but it can easily become just a simple distraction. The hatred, the sin, can be thrust underground, where it continues its subversive activities. There is, in fact, one alone who can deliver us from this state of bondage, the God of love. God's nature is love, which alone can contain all qualities and transfigure them into something of the divine essence. This was seen historically in the resurrection of Jesus, whose disfigured physical body was transformed into his glorious resurrection body. In other words, when we lift up to God our thoughts about our defects and fix our entire being on him from whom all creation springs and on whom all life depends, we come to know him more and more and become more and more like him. Our hatreds, our sins, are gradually transformed by his love into qualities that are useful to us and worthy of the work lying ahead. By identifying ourselves ever so humbly with God, who showed his nature freely to us in Jesus, we better control our lower nature and bring it into willing service for the benefit of our fellow men and women and the world at large. Trusting in the generous care of God our Father, let us confidently pray for our needs and the needs of people everywhere. We pray for the leadership of our churches lay and ordain, that they may know God's hand guiding them in the ways of the kingdom. We pray that the word of God, written in our scriptures, may take root in our hearts and grow strong there. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for the troubled parts of our world. May national leaders work collaboratively to establish hope, justice and equality for all, without discrimination. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We lift in prayer all who are sick, wounded or isolated. May they feel God's healing and holding hands. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And we pray for ourselves, for persistence, patience and faith, and daily reminders of the caring hands of God close by. We pray for the strength and, and courage in the face of suffering and injustice to be faithful to the mission God has called us to. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. 
Father in heaven. We bring these prayers to you who watch over us. Pour out your blessings upon us so that we may grow strong and produce a good harvest. Merciful Father, accept, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. May your roots grow deep into God's love and keep you strong. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to set before you, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to set before you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right. It is our duty and our joy at all times and in all places. To give you thanks and praise, Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, for he is your living word. Through him you have created all things from the beginning and formed us in your own image. Through him you have freed us from the slavery of sin, giving him to be born of a woman and to die upon the you raised him from the dead and exhorted him to your right hand on high. Through him you have sent upon us your holy and life-giving spirit and made us a people for your own possession. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praise him and say, Holy, Holy, holy. Holy Lord, God, God of power, power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, Grant by the power of your Holy Spirit these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you, do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom, and with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. Christ, Christ is risen. Christ, risen. Christ will, will come again. Accept for him, our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts, 
in the presence of your divine majesty. Renew us by your spirit. Inspire us with your love and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise, blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is, is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread in remembrance that Christ died for us. We feed on him in our hearts by faith, with thanksgiving. We drink this in remembrance that Christ's blood was shed for us. And we are thankful. You have led us to the living water. Refresh and sustain us as we go forward in our journey. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the Lord God watch over you in the week ahead and see the seeds planted within you growing strong and the shoots of your love growing towards heaven. And the blessing of God Almighty the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Thank you for joining us in our worship. Although our churches are open uh, for services, we are still going to provide services online on the YouTube channel and on Zoom at 10.45 on Sunday mornings and also on the telephone. For details of all that is on offer, please see the church website, massamparishes.org.